from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. To Central and South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Join us on Praise the Lord from the Mid-South, Memphis, Tennessee, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teaching to encourage and inspire and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord.
Pastor Hawkins, we're so excited to be a part of TBN's Praise from the Church show. Yes. Excited to have the opportunity to share with them what God is doing at the Temple of Deliverance Church. So tell the viewers a little bit about who you are, Pastor Hawkins. Well, Pastor Hawkins is a man who loves the Lord, a man who's been unusually favored and blessed by God, loves serving God's people. God has given me a servant's heart. So I believe ministry is about serving others, not trying to lift yourself up, but making sure that 
that you can impact people's lives, make them better, and just ministering to your community as well as the local church family. Awesome. Well, you talked about serving, and you definitely served the founder of Temple of Deliverance, Bishop G.E. Patterson, mm -hmm. your uncle. Right. Tell us a little bit about that experience. That was probably the greatest highlight of my life. Um, Bishop Patterson was always my hero, as we well know. He's the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ. Tremendous preacher. Everybody respected him from around the world. So for Bishop Patterson to reach out and say he wanted me to travel with him and be his adjutant apostolic is what it's called, the personal servant of the presiding bishop, that was my joy. I was able to watch him in public and in private. He was a gentleman in public, just like he was in private, anointed, uh, knowledgeable of the Word of God and, and knew how to handle people. Mm -hmm. And so I just watched him as I traveled with him and prayerfully some of that would rub off on me one day. Awesome, mm -hmm. definitely. So this year we are approaching the 2014 Chain Breaking Power Conference. Right. It's the second one and so mm -hmm. we want to hear a little bit about this conference. Explain to us the message behind the conference. Well the conference is birthed out of the need to be a blessing to to people. Uh, chain breaking conference is just like what it says. We want to break chains. People today are bound. They have habits. They have problems. They have family issues, domestic problems, um, money problems, all of that. And the chain breaking conference is designed to meet those needs. We've made sure that we've got speakers who have an anointing on their life, musical artists that have an anointing on their life that can break chains. Because when people come to church every day, Day, and we see them Sunday after Sunday, week after week, you never know what a person goes through. Mm -hmm. They may have a smile on their face, but their heart could be broken and wounded. And they won't tell you what's going on with them. But the anointing of God and being in the sanctuary with the people of God, worshiping, that is what breaks the chain. Matter of fact, the Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. And when you look at Acts chapter 16, you'll see Paul and Silas when they went into the city and they met this woman that had a spirit of divination. Mm -hmm. And when she had the spirit of divination, she was saying, these men are the men who show us the way of salvation. But right. they were really mocking them. Mm -hmm. And Paul took it for a few days, but after a while, the saint can't take it much longer. Right. And so he was grieved in his spirit, and mm -hmm. he cast the devil out of her. Mm -hmm. And then Paul and Silas were dragged and beaten and put in the prison and put in the inner prison. And then Paul and Silas started praying at midnight and yes. you know the story yes and then their chains fell off their yes. the stocks came off their feet and so this is where it comes from the chain breaking conference stems out of that scripture how saints can be bound saints can be frustrated saints mm -hmm. can be imprisoned in their mind yes. in their finances but the power of prayer and praise can break every chain awesome that is powerful. So the conference is going to consist of prayer. What else? We've got worship services. What else will the con conference consist of? Yeah, it's uh, April 16th through the 18th during Holy Week, mm -hmm. and it's Passion Week, as you well know, right between Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday, so it's a time of fasting and praying across the nation and here in the local church. Mm -hmm. So we've got classes that will be set up in the daytime that will talk about the subjects of bondage and breaking chains and all mm -hmm. of that. And then at night, uh, we have um, Bishop William Murphy as one of the premier gospel artists of this generation. Yes. Uh, Zaccardi Cortez, another tremendous gospel artist, and the TOD Women's Choir. And of course, our TOD Women's Choir is fantastic. I'm sure you've heard about them. If not, oh. you will hear about them. <laughs> yes, I love the Temple of Deliverance Women's Choir. That live recording was just anointed. It really was. That is the, the main word to sum that up. Sure. So tell us more about this women's choir. We know that they have uh, charted on the national billboards, top 10, right. and we know about the hit single, Everybody Prays. Right. Tell us about the, the women's choir. Well, the women's choir is really the vision of the First Lady, my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, she wanted to get a lot of women together, women who were not professional singers. Just right. women who were members of the church, um, women of all ages, shapes, sizes, socioeconomic backgrounds. They did not have to audition. Just come and join the choir and sing to the glory of God. Derek Starks out of Michigan, he produced the uh, album and mm -hmm. he wrote uh, the material for the songs. But Karen Clark Shear is on it. 
Tamala Mann mm -hmm. is on it, and uh, Lisa Page Brooks is on it, and right. then our own Carla Tobert Taylor is on yes. it. She's the singer that everybody prays, so it's just been fantastic. And God has used this women's group to travel around the country. I mean, we've been on Bobby Jones' show. We've been on The Word Network. We've been on TBN. We've done live tapings across the country. Churches are asking for the women's choir to come. And it's a joy that somebody else appreciate your music, sings your songs, and they're featured during the Chain Breaking Conference. They're, they're going to be part of it, not just Zarkati Cortez, not just Bishop William Murphy, but the Temple of Deliverance Women's Choir will be during this Chain Breaking Conference, along wow. with the powerful anointed preaching of Bishop Paul S. Morton. Awesome. This man is awesome. <laughs> yes, he is. He's, he's a great preacher. He's a great singer. He's a great churchman. He's going to be one of our I guess, mm -hmm. Dorinda Clark Cole, as we well know, the daughter of Maddie Moss Clark. She's mm -hmm. a powerful woman in her own right. Mm -hmm. She's going to be one of the speakers as well. Awesome. And then Apostle Don Shelby out of Ypsilanti, Michigan. He's going to be another great speaker. He's anointed vessel of the Lord, mm -hmm. and he's the father of the children that have the Shelby Five group. Yeah. So we're, we're just looking for a tremendous time during Holy Week, April 16th, 17th, and 18th, 7 o'clock nightly, right at at Temple of Deliverance, 369G, Patterson, Memphis, Tennessee. Awesome. That is just awesome. And, you know, I uh, understand that the Temple of Deliverance Women's Choir will also be performing within this show, the Praise from the Church show. So exactly. the viewers exactly. will get a chance to uh, witness they will. the ministry. Right. Right. So tell us a little bit about, um, I know that the Women's Choir has, you know, traveled the world, not only just to sing on the stages, but also to serve right. in the communities. Oh, yeah. Tell us about the Temple of Deliverance Church's involvement in the community. Well, our church is a community-oriented church. We, we love to serve people. That's what mm -hmm. this ministry is all about. Uh, our social services ministry gives away thousands of food and clothing items each week, monthly basis. Uh, we give hundreds and thousands of referrals on a monthly basis. So we're involved in that way. We just had our health care, which provided free health screenings for the church as well as community. Um, we're one of the churches that's participating in making sure everyone gets involved in signing up for health care. Mm -hmm. President Obama wants everybody to be signed up by March 31st deadline, so we're one of the churches that's pushing that through to make sure it's happening. And then we're Adopt-A-School Church as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we just um, took up La Rose Elementary School, and we've had some bad weather here. I'm sure maybe uh, it, it hasn't been the same all over the country, but in Memphis, we're used to warm weather, and it's some bad cold weather for us here and mm -hmm. so there are a lot of children that did not have coats and the principal called my wife and said we need some coats so we we were blessed to be able to go get a hundred to 125 brand new coats mm -hmm. and purchase wow. them for uh, the children and it was just a joy to be able to go to the school give them the coats be in their programs and the kids just come up to you and hug you and thank you yes. and they're so appreciative and that's kind of things we like to do and we don't we don't talk about what we do. Mm -hmm. Bishop G.E. Patterson did so much in this city and for the community, but he didn't talk about it. Right. And as I traveled with him, he, you know, he shared a lot of things with me and said what he did, but he never would talk about it because he was not that kind of man. Mm -hmm. And I picked that up from him. Just do the work. That's awesome. If you do the work, God sees what you do. And right. even the Bible says, if you pray in secret, your father will reward you openly. Awesome. So God doesn't make a whole lot of, of us bragging and boasting. Do the work and God will bless you. Wow, that's just powerful. Well, we have a few minutes left. I want to know and I want the viewers to get a chance to hear, Pastor Hawkins, what is your vision? What is your heart's desire for the body of Christ in this hour and even those that aren't saved? Yes. In Memphis and surrounding areas, what do you want to see accomplished by the power of God? Yeah, That's a good question. I'd like to see the the church being united. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing about our church now, we're, we're divided, and that's basically denominationalism. Mm -hmm. It's not about the, the the church itself, because the church is the body of Christ. So the right. body of Christ is not divided, but it, what it is, it's the people that make up the denominations, and they, they, they have to have titles and all this that mm -hmm. divides us. The body of Christ has to be one. 
because right. when God comes back or the Lord comes back, he's coming back for the body. He's right. not coming back for the Baptist church. He's not coming back for the Pentecostal church. He's not coming back for the church of God in Christ. Right. He's not coming back for the Catholic church. He's coming back for the body of believers. And the body of believers are men and women who love God, who've been washed in the blood of the Lord, who, who, uh, who live a consecrated and a saved life and follow the teachings of Jesus. He's more than just a man. He's more than just a prophet. He is the only begotten Son of God. So the churches have to come together. And then what I focus on here at the church where I pastor, strong men's ministry. God made men the leader, the head. So right. we've got to have our men, they've got to, to stand up up or man up and yes. they've got to come to the plate and, and, and let them know that I'm going to be the leader in my home, I'm going to be the leader for my family, I'm going to spend time with my children, I'm going to mold my son, mm -hmm. I'm going to help my daughter, I'm going to show my family that I'm involved with them, that I care. I, I, I tell our brothers to go to the parent-teacher conferences. Do that beside going to the games with your son or, right. or your child. Go to the parent-teacher conference, engage with the teacher, know what they're putting in your student, know the kind of spirit that your teacher has because mm -hmm. they are teaching your child. So you have to be involved. But then youth ministry is another focus. We've got mm -hmm. a lot of young people at our church and our young people are the church of today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we've got to mold them. They've got too many outside influences now with, with um, premarital sex, mm -hmm. with drugs uh, uh, and, and just a slew of things. It's, it's too many distractions. And so we've got to show young people that we care about about them, that the church is fun. Mm -hmm. It's more than just do's and don'ts. Quite naturally, right. you have to live holy. That's what God expects. Mm -hmm. But we want them to come to church, be saved, and have fun. We, we have fun at the church where I pastor. I, I love our young people, and I'm interested in them, and we're providing ministries for them. We want to do more for them, concerts, training sessions, leadership symposiums, things that get young people engaged and let them know that I, too, I too am special, I too am important, and I have a work to do for the Lord. So those kind of things that I'm looking for in the body of Christ. Amen. Awesome. Well, that's powerful. Well, uh, this has been an exciting experience to um, talk about the Temple of Deliverance Church of God in Christ right here on the Praise from the Church show. And tell the viewers uh, how they can, you know, connect with the ministry, connect with Temple of Deliverance. Well, I can, they can connect with me, Pastor Milton R. Hawkins, on Twitter, of course. Um, follow me at Pastor M. R. Hawkins on Twitter. I need some followers. You guys got to follow me. you are going to give you some great sayings, some great quotes. You've got to follow us. And then, of course, on our website, todkojic.org. Org, TODCojic.org. We live stream our services Sunday morning, 745 Central Standard Time and 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. And then we can be listened to uh, or heard on the radio, WBBP Radio, 1480 a.m. Uh, here in our, in our local area. You can just click in and stream in, and, right. and it, it'll be a great time. It'll be a great time. Awesome. Fantastic. Just play along, come on. I need that loud, we're getting that track loud. Come on, clap your hands like this. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody clap your hands. I need it loud, need it loud. Come on, clap your hands. Come on. Give me a little more track on the stage, come on. I need you to clap your hands.
God of the breakthrough, and he hears our prayers. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Y'all, we're his children, and he longs to see us in his will and enjoying the fruit of the land.
and he's the writer of my story.
place where you can see the Bible come to life. From the Garden of Eden and the historic land of Israel, through the life of Jesus, to the glory of heaven. Imagine yourself at the Holy Land experience in Orlando, Florida. Imagine ancient Israel through the wilderness tabernacle, the streets of Jerusalem, and the great temple. Imagine living in the days of David and Bathsheba, one of the Old Testament prophets, or the Apostle Paul. Imagine seeing the transforming power of Jesus come to life in those you've only read about. Imagine being an eyewitness to the life of Jesus, his miracles, his love, his sacrifice, and his final victory. Imagine being in the upper room for communion, following Jesus into baptism, walking through historic and peaceful gardens, or praying at the Wailing Wall. Imagine seeing the great scenes from the life of Jesus depicted in stunning fashion. Imagine the journey of God's word through the ages, from tablets to scrolls to the printing press. Imagine the life and work of angels yesterday and today. Imagine being in the ark or the belly of a whale, crossing the Red Sea, or walking on the water with Jesus. Imagine this. And then, see it at the Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida. Plus, miracle moments, the Jerusalem model, Bethlehem, the Jesus boat, the Stations of the Cross, special guest speakers and musicians, the stunning Church of All Nations Auditorium, and the crystal living waters. Can you imagine it? Then live it. Imagine yourself at TBN's Holy Land Experience in Orlando, Florida. Daniel chapter 3, beginning with verse number 14. Do you have it? Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou has set up. Verse 17 is where I draw my emphasis today. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. They said he's able and he will deliver us. So I want to use the subject today, I shall speak faith. Look at someone close to you and say, I shall speak faith. Bless you, ushers. Now, beloved hearts, most of us will never have any idea 
of the misfortunes that we will face as we travel life's puzzling road. I hear a cell phone, put it on vibrator, turn it off, thank you very much. <laughs> Whether you want to admit it or not, it's normal for life to throw you some curveballs. If you will allow me to ask you a question. When was the last time that you endured a hardship, pain, or suffering which in your mind was undeserved? My brothers and sisters, it's easy for us to understand trouble and hardship when we've brought it on ourselves. It's a no-brainer when we know that we are the architect or the initiator of our problems. But let's have a moment of honesty here. How do you really react when trouble and hardship finds you and you've done absolutely nothing to warrant it. How does it make you feel when your God offers you to the enemy like he did Job and allows you to experience put downs and hurts just because God knows you can handle it. Ask your neighbor, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Let me suggest a few things for your consideration. Number one, God allows his people to go through a season of suffering to test and strengthen your faith. But secondly, and I like this even better, God oftentimes allows you to suffer just so he can show you off. I know a lot of people may not be able to get with that or comprehend that, but God loves to show off his people. He loves to show God in you the hope of glory. He loves for other folks, especially the non-believers and the worldly and the ungodly, he loves for them to see you being attacked and then you still have joy. <laughs> gets glory when uh, the devil has done everything he can to you to hurt you, minimize you, discourage you, and destroy you, and yet there is a praise in your heart. You see, it's impossible for you to know everything that God knows. We have no idea where God is taking us. But we do have enough scriptural evidence to say, just like Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. We must always remember that on our way to Canaan, your steps that you take may lead you through the wilderness. And God has so ordered our steps that he has to bruise you in order to use you. And the characters of our text are prime examples of a people that were bruised, those that faced difficult circumstances while suffering as the children of God 
that he might get the glory. Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, they are four dedicated younger men that were taken captive from Jerusalem and deported to Babylon at the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The story and its backdrop are very familiar. Judah had turned her back on God, and Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 25, that the Lord sent his servant, the prophets, to warn Judah of their iniquity and their evil works. And yet they would not hear what thus saith the Lord. He repeatedly warned them not to go after other gods not to serve other gods, not to worship other gods, and they did it anyhow and provoked God to anger. And isn't it amazing how much trouble we get into when we don't listen to those who know more than we know and are just trying to help us. So the Lord said, because you did not hear my words, I will send my servant Nebuchadnezzar and you will serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. Now it's very interesting that God calls Nebuchadnezzar a Gentile king, someone who is not a part of the commonwealth of Israel. Someone who is far apart as serving Yahweh as the devil is himself. But God calls him his servant. He does not call him his servant because of relationship. But he calls him his servant because he is raising him up as an instrument of punishment to his own people. And any time uh, his people don't do what God has told them to do, he'll raise somebody up. He'll send some kind of calamity or devastation to let his folks know, I don't like what you said, and I don't like what you did, and I'm going to give you a chance and give you warning from the prophets, but if you don't turn, you will face my wrath. And I think all of us know through the years, those of us been saved any length of time, God always gives you warning. He, he, he doesn't never come right out and destroy you and come right out and beat you down. He, he'll give you a word whether it's through the pulpit, whether you pick up the Bible yourself and God speaks to you through his word, whether he sends somebody to confirm something that's been in your spirit, God will always give you a warning. And then it's up to you to say, yes, Lord. But if you don't say, yes, Lord, then you get what's coming. God allowed the king of Judah, King Jehoiakim, to fall into the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar. But not only did he allow him to fall into his hands, but even the vessels of the house of God, those that belong to Solomon's temple, he allowed them to fall into the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar thought that he had really did something because I got King Jehoiakim and now I've got the sacred, holy, consecrated vessels from the house of God. And it was in his mind, his indication of his power, the proof of his power that his God was better than Judah's God. But tell your neighbor, it was just a setup. And I love that about God, that God will allow the enemy to seem like he's winning and rejoicing over you because you've had something happen in your life that does not seem as though it is benefiting you. 
but God allows the enemy to seem like he's getting over because he's setting him up to fall at the end. If you don't know it by now, God will allow the devil to do some things to you so that the devil will feel like he's victorious over the believer. He has no idea that God is just allowing him. He's just setting him up because he's coming down in the end of the game. And the reason I know because uh, when you read the New Testament and you find out that the enemy, the devil, and his demons, they were rejoicing when Jesus was on the cross. We got him now. He's been healing the sick. He's been casting out demons. He's been working miracles. But look at him on the cross. He's a pitiful, bloody mess. His body is becoming emaciated, and he has no strength in his bones. And we got him now. He won't work another miracle. He won't solve another problem. But three days later... Got up out the grave, dangling some keys, said, I've got all power given unto me in heaven and I've got the power of hell and death in my hands. Tell your neighbor, it's just a setup. And every now and then, you've got to realize that you are going through something. And the devil is dancing over you. He's telling his imps and his demons and his children, we finally got her. We finally got him. They, they've been speaking in tongues, and they've been running in the pool and dancing and talk about, look what a mighty God we serve. But we finally got them. And the devil is as happy as he can be. He's shouting and dancing and partying and he's doing all kind of stuff. He doesn't know that God is just allowing him to get set up so that you can step on him. Because he's giving you power and authority to step on him and walk all over him. It's just a setup. In order to run an efficient government, King Nebuchadnezzar had to have men of ability. So he'd selected Daniel from the children of Israel, those of the king's seed, possibly an upper-class family in Jerusalem, along with his three friends. They all had the ability to stand in the king's palace because they were well-favored, skillful in wisdom, cunning in knowledge, understanding science. In other words, they had a head on their shoulders. They didn't waste time on Facebook or Twitter or playing computer games all day long. To baptize them in Babylonian doctrine they changed their names to try to erase their past. Hazariah, Hananiah, and Azariah, and, and Michelle were Jewish Hebrew names. But they said, we got to change your name and give you a Babylonian name so you can forget about your past. But I don't care how somebody tries to change your name. I can't ever forget what God has done in my life. One day, the king had a dream, and nobody could interpret it. The magicians and the sorcerers and the astrologers and the Chaldeans of his court were unable to answer the king. King Nebuchadnezzar said that if you could not give me what I need, if you could not tell me what my dream is because it's gone from me, that you would be cut in pieces and your house would be made a heap of ashes. 
The men of his court and the Chaldeans answered and said, There is not a man on the face of the earth that can show the king this matter. But those who are spiritual or non-spiritual, rather, can never see the things of God. God always has somebody standing by that will heed the call and bring him glory. Touch your neighbor and say, God always has somebody standing by that will heed the call and bring him glory. Hallelujah. The king was furious and commanded the destruction of all of the wise men of Babylon, which included Daniel and his friends. But Daniel was a man of faith. Daniel was a man of prayer. And he asked the king to give him time, and he would give him the interpretation. And I found out that when we spend time with our God, that he will give us the direction for every situation in our life. You just have to take the time and spend it with God. Daniel interprets the dream. God gave him the interpretation, and Daniel immediately began to give God, as the choir said, a right now praise. He did not uh, try to take the credit and the glory for himself, but he knew that God had spoken to him in the night hour. And as soon as he got the revelation from God, he said, Blessed be the God of heaven and earth the king that sits above the throne, and he gave God glory for what he had done. He interprets the dream, and he tells the dream to the king, and then the king promotes him. And when he gets promoted, he requested that his three friends accompany him to assist him in the administration over the affairs of the province of Babylon. So we see in Daniel that Daniel is a man of faith. We see in Daniel that Daniel is a man of prayer. But we also see that Daniel reaches back and gets somebody else when the Lord blesses him. Oh, my God, I just said something. When God blesses you, you need to reach back and get somebody else and bring them along with you. <laughs> Daniel said, God may have used me to be the one to give the revelation. But I went to my friends and told them to pray. And they joined me in prayer. So the reason I got this revelation is not because I pray by myself, but three other young men that love God like I do. They prayed and all us together beseech the throne of God. He gave me the revelation. So when God take me up, I got to take you with me. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, when God take me up, I can't forget about you. Whole lot of folks nowadays, sooner they get up, they forget about everybody else. You woke me up at 1.30 talking about pray for me, and then when God bless you, you forget about me. But if you had nerve enough to wake me up at 1.30 in the morning, you ought to have nerve enough to speak up for me when it's time for me to get a promotion. <laughs> Don't call me and wake me up out of my bed. When you needed money, you had no problem coming getting along. Then God blesses you and you try to act like you don't know me. You and your money both know who I am. <laughs> and let me put a disclaimer. No, I ain't talking about nobody. Y'all quick to say, who done borrowed money for the pet? No, I'm just giving y'all revelation as it comes to me. I'll but if the shoe fit, mm -hmm. <laughs> Daniel interprets the dream, gets promoted, brings his friends along with him, and now the children of Israel are sitting up in the prime spots in a Babylonian Gentile kingdom. But tell your neighbor, but the devil is still the devil. 
devil is still the devil. Nebuchadnezzar sets up an image of gold. Somebody said approximately 90 feet tall in the plain of Dura, the province of Babylon. He gathered all the princes, the governors, the captains, the who's who of Babylon, key men in their cabinet to attend the dedication. He knew that his empire was strong. He knew that his empire was formidable. But he thought that he would use religion for political purposes and exact worship from all men to honor and worship this golden image in the name of Babylon. He said, at the time that you hear the sound of music, I want you to fall down and worship the image that I have sat at or be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. All the men and the inhabitants of Babylon when they heard the sounds from the music department, they all fell down, except the children of God, in particular Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Even though their names changed, even though they had Babylonian names, they still had a Hebrew heart. Even though they had Babylonian names, they still had a Jewish heart. That nobody is like the God of Abraham. Nobody is like the God of Isaac. And nobody like the God of Jacob. I just believe that a real saint, you could put a real saint in any situation. And a real saint will survive. Because whatever is going around in the world, after all I've been through, I still have some joy when I think of what God has done for me, when I think about where God is taking me, when I think about what God is doing for me right now, I've got to give him a right now praise. I've got to tell the world he's a right now God. And I've got to let everybody know that my God is an awesome God. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And I just believe that you can take a believer and put him in all kind of situations. But a real believer will give his life for the Lord. A real believer will say you can kill me with a gun. You can stab me all night long, but you can't take my soul. Jesus said, fear not him that can destroy the body, but fear him that can destroy the soul. Because when it's all over, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. My body may be killed, but my soul is living on. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. So you know in every camp, there are some snitches. In every camp, there are some squillers. Look around you now, but don't say nothing. In every camp, somebody's got to tell it. In every camp, somebody's got to say something trying to bring you down. And the men of Babylon said, King, did not you command that when you hear the sound of music, the cornet and the flute and the sackbut and the dulcimer, did not you command that everybody has to bow down and worship the golden image that you set up. But be it known unto you that those Hebrew boys that you put up in Dura, in the province of Babylon, they are not bowing when the golden image is set up, when the sound of music is played. And they were told that they had to bow down 
but they're refusing to bow down. And when they went and got those three Hebrew boys, brought them before the king, the king inquired of them and asked, is it true what I'm hearing? That you don't worship the golden image that I've set up. But I don't care how much gold it is. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. They were told if you don't serve up the golden image, that you would be cast in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. But with boldness and faith and courage in God, they told the king, if it be so, our God whom we serve, he is able. Somebody shout, he's able. He's able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. He's able to bring us out of this situation and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O oh, king. But be it known unto you that if he doesn't do it, it doesn't mean that he can't do it. It just means that he won't do it. But if he doesn't do it, I want you to know that we'll never bow down and serve your God nor worship the image that you set up. And I think that every child of God has to learn how to speak faith in the midst of their situation, in the midst of unfavorable, in the midst of undesirable situation. You've got to learn how to speak faith when the enemy comes in like a flood. Speak faith and say, you shall not cling to my body. Speak faith and say, I shall live and not die to declare the glory of the Lord. Speak faith and say, I'm coming out with my hands lifted up. Speak faith and say, God told me that he would supply all my needs. Speak faith when your bills are high and your money is low. Speak faith that God holds the cattle on the thousand hill. All the silver is mine. All the gold is mine. And whatever you need, God's got it. He's got everything that you need. If you need money, it's just a word. If you need healing, it's just a word. If you need deliverance, it's just a word. Speak faith and then watch God work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's going to be times in your sanctified walk that you've got to stand up for God so he will stand up for you. Do you remember Deacon Stephen? Deacon Stephen was at the mercy of the Cyrenians, the Libertines, and the Alexandrians, the descendants of the freedmen. And when Stephen finished preaching, being full of the Holy Ghost, they were cut to their heart. They wanted to kill him, and they stoned Stephen to death. Hallelujah. Because of him preaching about Jesus, but because Stephen stood up for God, Jesus, who normally sits at the right hand of the Father, he stood up for Stephen. He noticed that his child was being mistreated, and he stood up for Stephen. When you stand up for Jesus, he'll stand up for you. He notices when you are being mistreated, but stand up for God anyhow. Tell him I'm going with Jesus all the way. Tell him the Lord has been too good to me to turn around now. Let them know you can do what you want to do. But as for me and my house, I will pray the Lord. Matter of fact, when I get home, I'm going to find my oil and put my oil over my door. Put my oil on my baby's pillow. Put my oil in my garage. Sprinkle my oil on my sidewalk and tell the devil you don't park here. You don't belong here. Hallelujah. 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 The Hebrews stood up for Jehovah. 
they stood up and spoke up for God and said, we won't serve your God. And the king got so mad that the Bible said the form of his face, his visage changed before their eyes. He got so mad, it showed up in his countenance. And he said, turn the heat up and make it seven times hotter than it should be. But I don't care. I don't care how the devil turns up the heat. God knows how to turn up the hell. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, the devil may turn up the heat, but God will turn up the hell. know he's able to keep you from falling. He's able to make you a witness. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yes, the furnace was seven times hotter and the Bible lets me know that the men grabbed Shadrach Meshach and Abednego took them into the furnace. They were bound hand and feet. They had all their clothes on, had on their turban, had on their leggings, had on their hosing, took them in the fire, threw them down in the fire. But while they were throwing them down, God spoke to the fire, and the fire leaped over them and got the three men that put them in the fire. And after a while, God says, it's time now to show you who I am. It's time now to show you my glory. God, let them do it like that. Hallelujah. God, let them do it like that to show you and I that the devil can tie you up and the devil can throw you down. And the devil can leave you for dead. But if God be for you, who can be against you? If God is on your side, greater, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Here they are, bound in the furnace, tied up, tangled up, messed up. But God said, now it's time to show you who I am. And God came down, stepped off the throne, entered into the fire, got in there with them. I don't know what he did. I don't know if he snapped his fingers. I don't know if he winked. I don't know if he said, be gone. But whenever he showed up, chains got loose. Tell your neighbor, your chains have to fall. Because God just showed up. Yo, your chains have to fall. Because God showed up. And since God showed up, you ought to praise God. Since God showed up, my hands are free. My feet are free. My soul is free. And glory. He showed up. Yes. He showed up. And when they got in the furnace, hallelujah, he set them free and they got loose in the furnace, just walking around, giving God glory, walking around, looking at the fire, but not feeling the fire, seeing the heat, but not feeling the heat. Their hair was not singed, clothes didn't smell like fire. If you want to get out of the fire, learn how to praise him in the fire. Be a witness and tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you want to get out the fire, learn how to praise him in the fire. While you're in the fire, give God a shot. 
while you're in the fire. Give God a praise while you're in the fire. Give him a thank you. Yes, 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 yes. I shall, I got the clothes. I shall speak faith. I'm walking around. Hallelujah. Full of faith. Because I know he is able. If my God can get me out of the fire. If my God can feed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. If my God can walk on water. If my God can heal somebody that's been sick for 38 years, then I don't have a problem that God can't solve. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to depend on his word. Yes, uh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's what the Lord wanted you to hear this afternoon. I shall speak faith. It's an individual thing. You can be put in the furnace of life, bound and tied up. But when God steps in that situation, everything that has you tied up has to loose you. faith, my sister. If someone in this room now, the devil, has said you've done too much. You've done some horrendous things and God will never accept you. God will never forgive you. Let me just say it plain. English and not speak in tongues. The devil is a lie. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.